oh man, this video is going to be fun. Hey, uh, let's talk about the Sony RX100 Mark 7 versus the brand new G7X Mark 3. And uh, if we're just meeting, my name's Sean, and on this channel, it's called Think Media. We bring you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Um, but you may have heard the news. The G7X Mark III is officially dropping on uh, around August 1st or 2nd of 2019. It's got a mic input in it, and this is a Sony RX100 V. I don't have the 7 in my hands, but it's the comparison. It's kind of a showdown between two brand new, pretty significant camera releases from both Sony and Canon. And so in this video, I just wanna share a few of my thoughts having tested this one out and now that I've been studying the specs of the new Sony. Um, and then we'll be doing some Q&A. So uh, I've got Jordan helping me. So if you have a question, let me know. And I would love to answer your questions. But what's up, Noel, uh, Jerry, financial investor, Kimberly? Let's dive straight into it. Hey, uh, first of all, the PowerShot Canon G7X Mark III is dropping August 2nd, expected availability for $749. Now, actually, both these cameras are, um, you can see all the details on BNH uh, photo, and I've uh, linked to that in the description below. The significant things about this G7X uh, Mark III camera are that it does have 4K video, and I've tested it. It actually looks beautiful, 4K, 30 frames a second, and with no crop, no crop at all. So what's a crop? Well, when you're filming, sometimes you're like, wow, the shot is so beautiful and wide. You hit the record button and it like crops in. The EOS R crops in, the M50 crops in. I kind of consider the 4K over there not super usable. And so there's no crop on the uh, the 4K. A few of the other features, the most significant one is the mic input. And if you just want a quick thought, um, the mic input alone I think is worth the upgrade. And we'll talk about a few of the other things. Um, and let's see what else we got. So it's... The um, same lens starts at 1.8. Lens is beautiful. Image is beautiful. It's a new sensor. And ironically, uh, the sensor inside of the Canon camera is a Sony sensor, I believe from the RX100 Mark III. So a couple versions before this, four versions before the new one, is the sensor that's inside of the Canon. Now, if you're also wondering, I, I figured we could answer some questions, G7X Mark III versus Mark II. The G7X Mark III in my opinion, if we just gave it kind of an over a flyover, and there's definitely some negatives with it, for seven forty nine, in my opinion, it's worth the upgrade because it does have a new sensor with better image quality. It does have a mic input, and that alone is worth it for me. It's got a new processor. The thing is blazing fast. The way the menus click through, the ability to touch the screen. There's nothing like Canon menus, Canon uh, color. Uh, it's just a really, really great camera. Now, what are the drawbacks of the G7X Mark III, though? Well, there are a few. Um, first of all, the 4K is beautiful, but it overheats. And I've heard other reports of this. We, uh, my friend Dave from uh, Kinotika, he, he was doing it inside an air conditioning, and the 4K, uh, it overheated after about five minutes. Um, when we use this outside in about 80 degree weather, it just started overheating like crazy. Now, I was able to take it the other day and get clips here and there with no problems. I was, in fact, I've got a, a video I can play for you. A couple of the features of this are that it has, um, there's slow motion. So there's 120 frames slow motion that I shot. That is slow motion shot at like a Dave and Buster's. It still has 60 frames a second. Of course, um, that's 120 frames. With the 120 frames a second, though, you'll notice that the shots were kind of out of focus. Um, you lose autofocus in slow motion. And the 120 frames also overheats. And so we had trouble. We'd go inside. I even like took the battery out and put my Starbucks iced coffee on top of the camera to try to transfer some cooling. But nevertheless... The features are pretty dope. I mean, this is that's 60 frames a second, I believe, right there, slowed down. Um, and it, it, it's an amazing camera. I mean, people are going to hate on a lot of things, but it really is super dope. And so that's some G7X Mark II footage that you just saw. A couple drawbacks, though. 4K overheats, 120 overheats. Um, another drawback, you lose autofocus in 120. And then some people are complaining that they did not include dual pixel autofocus. So what does that mean? It means that when you've got an M50 or some of the newer T7i cameras, the different cameras, dual pixel autofocus 
is like, boom, it's on you. It'll track your face. It's amazing. The thing is, though, this is contrast based autofocus. It's the same as the G7X Mark II, and it's really not that bad. I mean, anybody who's ever vlogged, in fact, let me know in the comments if you've ever used a G7X Mark II. It's a great camera. My friend Benji on his vlog channel, that's what him and his wife use. Contrast autofocus is great. It does see your face. It might hunt. It might be out of focus. But that kind of brings me to uh, some of my final thoughts with this camera. Here's what I think the G7X Mark II is all about. You want a new sensor, so it's going to be even better. So I think about my friends Benji and Judy. They vlog with this. Should they upgrade? In my opinion, yeah. Better sensor. Same autofocus. Nice flip screen. It's more durable now. The flip screen is more durable. Um, mic input for when they want to maybe do more something more professional or sit down and actually plug in a mic. It's got a clean HDMI output, which means that if you wanted to use this for live streaming, there's some benefits there. It also is the first camera ever that you can supposedly live stream directly out of the camera. I haven't tested that, and I honestly just kind of don't care. <laughs> like it just, I, 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 I'd rather live stream like this. I'd rather live stream with more control. I don't want, I was wondering like, I mean, maybe I'm overthinking it, but I was like, I'm not going to type in my YouTube title in my freaking camera. I'm going to do that on my laptop or on, even on my phone, but I haven't tested it. So, so maybe I'm judging it wrongly. I just, I mean, it's a cool feature, but whatever. So I think for $750, if you want the latest G7X, and here's what I'm saying, the 1080p, which the two had, and the 60 frames a second in 1080p, which the two had is where you'd want to play in this. And I was out vlogging with it the other day. 1080 was where I was living. I knew I could jump into 120, maybe shoot for 10 seconds before it overheated or shoot in a cool place. And 4K is kind of an option. It also has a thing that like natively shoots vertical. But that brings me to another point. And then let's talk about G, about the um, new uh, Sony. You know, uh, I am excited because I think the Mark III will drive down the price of the Mark II, which is an amazing camera. You're still going to get you still get Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, still get contrast-based autofocus. You still get 60 frames a second for a little bit of slow motion. Um, and there's definitely some new, I mean, it, the med, there's some great things. So we're not, this isn't a comprehensive review or anything. And I am going to do questions in just a bit. And so um, I do see some questions coming in. I'll rapid fire those. Let's talk about now the Sony CyberShot. So that's not the right clip. All right, we're going over here. Um, this is this the brand new, like kind of just announced Sony Cybershot camera coming out August 16th, right at the same time. I almost wonder if in a way this is Sony like slapping Canon in the face, but actually my initial opinion is even though the title of this video is comparing these two cameras, I don't think they're even meant to be compared. I mean, for crying out loud, the Sony, this is the five, by the way, it's just a prop in this video. The Sony you could buy two G7X Mark IIs for the cost of the Sony. Before I even get into it, it's $1,200. The, the cost of the Sony, if you've got this kind of money lying around, you're pro you should probably buy something else, even the Sony a6400, because it's going to be more of like a le interchangeable lenses, a little bit more features, a little bit better image. But let's talk about it, because it's an amazing camera. I just think it's an interesting point-and-shoot price point. It's $1,200 for a point-and-shoot camera. No doubt this thing is remarkable. So now you got a brand new sensor. Of course, it's phase detection autofocus. Crazy processor. I don't even know what front-end LSI is. Now, the, the focal distance is interesting. It's 24 to 200 so a really incredible walk around the city type of camera. I would say this. This is my dream camera for like touring Europe. Like, And if I was only going to bring like one camera, this Sony has created a masterpiece. Like you've got a mic input now. So both of them are bringing that. They, they've, you've got incredible photography with an incredible photo range. You've got a great video, 4K video, no record limit. I'm not sure about crop, and maybe somebody knows in chat. And Jordan, if you see something, uh, copy paste. If somebody knows about the crop on this, and what's crop again? Again, 4K is cool, but if it like cuts in a bunch, it's maybe not as cool. Now, there's a, a couple other things. I mean, I guess there's new stabilization. Uh, mind you, the G7X has three levels of image stabilization. That's digital. That is pretty great. Apparently, this has optical as well, so that's exciting. Um, the sensor will definitely be better. I'm saying the image quality is probably far superior to the G7X Mark II, as it should be. Um, it starts at 2.8, f2.8. Now, 
I would imagine this sensor is so much better and better in low light that even starting at 2.8, the 1.8 of the G7X um, doesn't matter as much, but it is kind of nice that the G7X starts at 1.8. Mm-hmm. Man, the, the bokeh, like, it's pretty amazing, the blurry background. I think 2.8, though, is is a great for low light. I imagine the sensor is amazing. And then it only goes up to 4.5 at 200 millimeters. This is like a, this is a movie studio, the G, the Sony uh, RX7. I mean, it's it's a freaking amazing. Like, it's an exciting uh, camera for sure. Um Having not tested it, though, you've got uh, up to 90 frames a second, and that's photo mode or up to continuous shooting 20 frames a second. I should mention that there is high burst photography in the Canon. The autofocus, uh, we might have been doing it wrong, but like Omar and I could not get the AI servo to work or whatever. It just didn't really track with people. Where on the flip side, they're essentially saying they've packed an A9 into the Sony uh, Mark Seven, meaning it can I could do eye tracking. It can it can follow you around, and the focus points are just crazy. The G Seven X Mark II, v- your average vlogger, not even average like a negative term, just your 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 typical needs vlogger on YouTube. Great camera, easy to use, easy menus, better price point. Your hipster. Plans on shooting flat footage, 4K, shooting all kinds of slow-mo and hipster because they paid $1,200 for the latest iPhone, biggest size, and now they're paying $1,200 for the fanciest Sony of all time. Whatever, right? So to kind of the difference, this one's cost twice as much, man. You 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 better be doing more than vlogging. I mean, you could vlog on it, but this thing could do a lot more than that. What else you got? You got... um. Uh, they both have like panorama modes. They got time-lapse modes and things in there. So here you, you've got 4K. Now I should mention this. One thing they did to the G7X is they took away 20 forms, uh, 24 frames a second. Now what does that mean? A lot of people like to shoot in 24 frames a second because it gives that film look. And Canon purposefully crippled that because there's no way it would take more processing power to do less frames a second. Now, in a way, I actually don't know if Canon even crippled it. I think they just made it more simple. This is like your vlogging camera for every person, right? So it's simplified. Like it's, oh, you want 30 frames? Do you want 60 frames for slow motion? Or kind of because you're using it for even like gaming and you want to like do your 60 frame game with the, you know, live streaming on it. So I think they just simplified it. Whereas over here on the Sony, you've got the full Monty, full 4K at 24, um, all the way up to 30 frames. And I've heard no record limit, which is insanity. So I imagine if you could do continuous power in here and maybe if the new Sony is USB-C, that is one uh, value proposition of the Canon is that it's USB-C and you can power it while you live stream continuously and charge it through that port. Now, this is, I will update you later. This hasn't worked for me. It plugs into my computer, but I haven't been able to power it. I've been talking to Canon. I don't, I, you know, maybe this is like a final version or something. And so, but the dream is that you could live stream off this, plug it in and have continuous power in the USB-C. I would imagine that's probably what Sony's doing as well. That would be a game changer because then you could go continuous record limit, continuous power through USB-C. Again, I'm just jumping on this today. So let me know if you have any questions and then we'll keep the conversation going in the comments. And by the way, if you're new here, Think Media, we uh, do a lot of social media strategy and tips. Um, and uh, YouTube growth tips as well as tech gear reviews. So hey, smash subscribe, ring the notification bell so you never miss anything and smash the like button if you're pumped that we're talking about this and I'll jump into your questions in just a second. Um, You know, uh, this is a tilting touchscreen. I like that they have touchscreen on here because Canon's touchscreen is amazing. And uh, I mean, that's, that's probably about it. The thing is just absolutely a gangster. But it is twelve hundred dollars. You know, see special financing options. No, no doubt you're going to need those financing options. So, uh, final thoughts. I think that when if you compare these, and then we'll do Q and A. Um, if you want to upgrade from the Mark II, you want the mic input. That alone is worth it, man. The 1080. It's it's just as good as the Mark II and better with the better processor. Um, but some of the other things, I wouldn't get it thinking you're going to be able to depend on the 4K. I tested a 10 minute, a full length clip, 10 minute limit on 4K. Tested the whole thing in my office here, no problem, no overheating. But it just made me nervous because I thought, huh, I could shoot 4K clips for like video influencers, plug in a, a, a handheld mic, and this thing would be amazing. But I would never depend on 4K. Here's the deal: 
I'm going to take this with me. In fact, this is irresponsible. I'm even doing this live stream. I have a flight in like one hour. It, I, it, I should be okay. The, the airport is close here in Vegas. Maybe. Um, the I'm, I'm excited because we just put this on a tripod, tap the face focus, you know, let contrast uh, focus do its work and do a handheld AVX mic. And out of my pocket, I can shoot crispy 1080p video. The image quality is really good. I mean, uh, this clip right here, you could tell it was like out of, uh, you know, these were some of the, this is, I mean, this is amazing. This is really good image quality, in my opinion, for the, they got the nice Mark III uh, sensor from the Sony camera, um, great in low light. These were out of focus because that's the 120 frame slow motion, some of those shots. Um, but anyways, so yeah, the Mark II, phenomenal. Three, I should say. And then this camera is for, you really are like, I want to, in my pocket, be able to take one of the great cameras, this is just a prop for the Mark Seven across Europe, vlog on it, sit down, put it on a tripod, interview somebody, I want 4K, I want unlimited, I just want it all. I think it's an amazing camera. I have yet to test it and get one in my hands, but I'd love to hear what you think. Question of the day, which camera are you excited about? Tell me in the comments. Are you thinking about upgrading? Are you thinking about picking up a Canon uh, Mark II? Same thing for Sony too. Like the, the six is cool and the five is the one I'm holding is actually a little bit more that I like because it's not the full focal length and it starts at 1.8 and you did have 4K and you did have not just 120 frames, but if you shrink down the resolution, this does like 960 frames for a few seconds. I mean, Sony is just a little bit more like fancy if you want all kinds of crazy features that most people won't use and that most YouTube creators don't really need. But if you do need them and you know what it's all about, then let me know what you think about the Sony. Question from Financial Investor. Would you recommend a GoPro at all for recording? Absolutely. They're great. Uh, G7X worth the money? I think so. I mean, the G7X, again, I love the version one, but now I think the Mark II is a for sure good buy. And I still think despite everything I've said, right? I, I think this is a great, great camera. I, I think it's 750 for for uh, the image quality, for what it can do, for, uh, I love the build quality, I love how it looks, I think it's great. Um, does it have a flip out screen? They both do. So they both have flip out screens, same style. And by the way, with the mic input, there is nowhere to mount the mic, let's be clear, right? So you can get mounts that like kind of go under and give you like a little mount on the side for a thing but there isn't anywhere to mount the mic. Now that doesn't bother me. Vlogging, I'm still gonna vlog with nothing because the audio is fine. Hey, what's up? You're just vlogging, it's, it's okay. People have done it for years, man. I don't know, people trip out about mic inputs. The mic input excites me, not for vlogging, but for having something in your bag. Like I said, I'm gonna go to this conference and I'm always ready to like capture uh, spontaneous content. So with a Gorillapod and one AVX mic in my laptop bag. I do have a production studio here that is amazing. Pick a good area of lighting, plug in the little AVX thing, just let it hang off, and it's a handheld mic that I use here on Think. You've probably seen it in Video Influencers. So yeah, that's what I'd say. Um, is there a, a video length on the Mark III? There is a limit, 29, 30 minutes on 1080p clips and 10 minutes on 4K clips. Pretty incredible that the Sony took rid of that limit. Does it overheat using 4K? Now, that's a good point. Yes, the Mark III does. Can't tell you about the Sony yet. People, I'm excited for people to test it because unlimited 4K record time, I mean, and, and, and I know we can like hate because these are expensive products and then you're like, man, you know, it, it sucks if it lets you down, it overheats. On the flip side though, how in the world are they having all that technology and all that stuff happening inside of here and not having it overheat when you're doing like 4K video? I mean, a lot of cameras struggle with heat in 4K, so we'll see. Is that tiny action camera that could shoot uh, 4K uh, an issue? Yeah, okay, that's a good point, Roger. So why do some small action cameras not have an issue, but Sony and Canon do? It would be due to the size of the sensor. Small action ca camera sensor is this big. Sony sensor's bigger. And a lot of times they pull out some lines. These are both like one inch sensors. And then it's also the size of the data. Like there's all kinds of different levels of compression. So I believe they're both can go all the way up to 100 megabytes a second when you're selecting that. So if I go in to the video mode of the G7X and I wanna pick out 4K, um, it tells me that 4K, it actually doesn't even tell me what the file size is. The Sony gives us an option, 60 megabyte a second clips or 100 megabyte a second clips. Um, 
And so, yeah, that is interesting. But small action cameras have smaller sensors and probably more compression uh, or something like that. Where can you mount the external mark? Uh, I just kind of answered that. But there's other ways. Check out Instagram. Follow the hashtags. There's a lot of ones that just have like uh, almost it, it just pulls off like a little cold shoe right to the side. And people are using the road one, the road wireless thing, a little shotgun mic. But in my opinion, so now we could talk about if I've got, you know, 1200 bucks sitting around and I'm thinking about buying a camera, check out a video. I'll link it up on the YouTube card. Our best camera for t- YouTube 2019 is still the M50 and versus the A6400, depending on your budget. And I've been using the A6400. It's amazing. If I'm going to bring something that big and I'm already going to have a mic on it and like a gorilla pod on it, I don't know where it is, uh, then I'm going to just go for that. I think the dream of a point shoot camera is not rigging it up, but to each his own. I think the dream of a point shoot camera is this. This is the dream. This is the flow. It's like jean pocket. Like with my A6400 all rigged up, it fits in no pocket. You know what I mean? I have to carry it around or put it in my bag. And so that's just a thought. I think that's my opinion on the mic input. I bet there's going to be some mics that just like plug right in and stick off the side. And there already are some that you could um, kind of just almost like tape and let it just point right at you. Like even maybe the the Rode smartphone one, you can maybe cut the rubber door off and just let it, you know, there's going to be, I think, a lot of innovation uh, and, and DIY hacks for that kind of stuff. Um, please touch on the low light compared to the G7X. So I can't really speak to like how great the Sony will be, but I already know the five is superior to Canon. Some of my summary here is that I don't even really think they're competitors. I think Canon, it, there's, it's obvious, it's plain as day. They are behind. It is not as good in features. It, it does not have the innovation that Sony does, but it also doesn't cost $1,200. It costs $750. So that's something to put in perspective is that I don't I think it's like if you really want crazy pro features that's what the Sony's all about if you want a solid camera that is going to get the job done for YouTube content that's what the Canon G7X Mark II or 3 is all about um the, does the G7X shut off after 30 minutes good question added to my research list um if it has clean HDMI and you don't need to actually record with it and it's getting continuous power through the um USB-C port and they built it for streaming, my assumption is that it does not, Brandon, but I have not tested that. Chris, Sony uh, does touchscreen. It says touchscreen on the B&H specs. And I link to both cameras. Right now, I've only seen them on B&H. So if you wanna go deeper on them, check out those links in the YouTube description below. Just bought the Sony RX100 six, two months ago. Should I return it and wait for the seven? If you still can, I would be tempted because I, I think this this is an amazing camera, Mike. And and I would if I had already dropped, you probably dropped a thousand, right? I would drop two hundred more to have unlimited four K, uh, you know, record time, um, to have uh, the 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 new sensor. I believe it's like a new sensor with a second sensor. It's an updated sensor design that's enables speed, blackout free, continuous shooting. From a photography standpoint, the RX one hundred seven is crazy, 90 frames per second working for faster moving uh, subjects, 379 point hybrid autofocus. And I and and if you've used any other Sony cameras, which I travel with the a7 III for photography, I'm vlogging with the A6400, um, you got S-Log3 HLG gamma settings. So this is for people, you got the 190, 960 frames per second slow motion, probably just for a burst of high frame rate. So just, it's crazy, man. You also get the pop-up viewfinder. So you're even paying for that, right? You're paying for the ability to get a viewfinder. There's no viewfinder on the G7X Mark III or II. And so this is meant to be like a mini ultimate camera that goes right in your jean jacket, right? For 1200 bucks, please don't get, people will probably knife you for that amount of money. Don't let them know what it is. Tell them it's Mark I and you bought it used and scratch it up on the concrete so nobody knifes you because people have been knifed for less than $1,200. It's an expensive camera. I tell you what, man. Um, okay, questions. And I got to get to the airport. All right. Just bought, uh, should I switch from the M50 to the new Mark? Love that question. In my opinion, no, unless your uh, ambitions are something 
different, like to travel more, scale down and slim down your setup. In my opinion, here's the thing. If I was dealing with, now you're like, you got piles of money, I suppose. If at first I wanted to get a solid YouTube setup for shooting at home around my office like this, I would want something more like the M50. Nice big old flip screen, place to mount my mic on top, you know, more robust interchangeable lenses. I could use it for all kinds of things. If I was then gonna get a second camera because I was like, you know what, it's just a little big to travel and I want to get something to travel with, that's why I'd maybe get the G7X Mark III because it's just this, it's just this point shoot, right? Now, you would lose interchangeable lenses, right? You could certainly do, this is a YouTube content creation powerhouse. With the mic input, that is the game changer because now you could get pro audio while sitting at home and then you could take it with you to vlog maybe without a mic. So it is very attractive if you wanted to flip your M50. In my opinion, the answer is kind of both, unless you're only gonna be on the road, need small, and are gonna travel. Um, and I would usually go for a more proper camera just so I have a greater feature set if I only could buy one camera. So how much does each camera cost? To break it down, the new Sony Cybershot RX100 Mark VII cost $1,200 and it's coming out August 16th, 2019. You can check out details in the YouTube description below. And the Canon G7X Mark III is $750. It's coming out August 2nd, 2019. Both of them are available for pre-order. This guy comes in silver as well. That's the model that Canon um, lent me. This is a, a loaner copy that they sent out to me. So that's the cost. And the megapixel of the RX100 um, 20.1 megapixels on an updated sensor, they say. And so, hey, more information coming your way about um, uh, these as I get my hands on them, as well as uh, a lot of coverage of the G7X. Bottom line, in my opinion, I don't think you could go wrong with each of these, with either of these cameras. What you need to ask is what are the features that you need? What is it that are essential to you? What can you live without? If you're just joining, watch the replay because I go in depth and I've tested out the um, the Mark III Canon quite a bit over the last week and a half or so here in Las Vegas. And so thanks for being here. Um, if you want to check out our playlist about the best camera for YouTube 2019 where we cover a lot of M50 stuff as well as some of our favorite Sony stuff around the A6400, just click or tap the YouTube card. Smash like on this video if you got value. Question of the day, are you planning on upgrading your camera soon? Are you thinking about going from the G7X Mark II to the three? Are you intrigued about the, the seven? Are you like, that's great, but my God, like 1200 bucks, man, what are we thinking? Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you wanna check out another video from Think Media, just you know, click or tap the screen uh, right over here or another one right there. And I will see you in the next video. Appreciate you, peace and love, peace.